Willem de Neal, and welcome to the Amuna Project. We here at the Amuna Project are continuing in our series of videos with respect to inspiration, uh, information, education, guidance, advice, and I want to continue in my stories with respect to the seer of Lublin. This would have been Yaakov Yitzhak uh, Halevi Horowitz, the Chose of Lublin, and two related stories as they deal with sin and despondency. Uh, that, uh, that feeling of uh, hopelessness, dejection, low spirits, depression, almost like a, like a despair. Um, one time uh, there was a, a chassid, one of uh, Sir of Lublin's uh, chassidim, his followers. And he complained to the rabbi of Lublin that he was tormented with the, the yetzahara, the evil desire, the evil inclination. And he's, he'd become despondent over it. He's, he was feeling very low, very dejected. He was, uh, he was starting to feel uh, hopeless. The seer of Lublin immediately said to him, guard yourself from this feeling of hopelessness, from this dejection, from this despondency, above all. For it is worse, the seer of Lublin says, it's actually worse and more harmful than the sin itself. And was amazed. And the, uh, the seer of Lublin continued, when the Yetzihar, when the evil inclination wakens this desire in people, he's not concerned with bringing him to sin. Well, yeah, that's the short-term goal. But ultimately, the goal is to plunge the man into despondency by way of his sinning. That dejection, that despondency, that's the ultimate goal, to have you give up hope to have you, that feeling of helplessness that there's nowhere to turn and there's nowhere to go. That's the ultimate goal. That's what you have to watch out against. Um, we're going to be doing, oh, a similar story. There was, um, in Lublin, there was a great sinner, uh, a sinful guy. There was, <laughs> there was no Avera. There was no sin. There was no thing that this guy did not uh, take part in. And he was uh, joyful. He was quite merry about it. And when every once in a while, this sinner would come to, and he wanted to talk to the seer of Lublin. And any time this guy wanted to talk to the seer of Lublin, um, uh, Rabbi Yaakov Yitzhak was more than happy to, to give him his time. And his followers, his chassidim, were quite puzzled at this. And um, they were actually annoyed. And they said to each other, how is it possible that our rabbi, who all he has to do, he's the seer of Lublin, he just looks in your face and he knows exactly who you are. He knows he's a sinner. And why, if he knows he's a sinner, do, does he give him all this time? I mean, we, we don't understand it. Well, at one point, somebody got up the chutzpah, the courage, the, the, uh, the effrontery, to actually put this question to the seer of Lublin. And um, he says, why, um, why do you consider this sinner worthy uh, to speak with and associate with as if he was some sort of man of integrity, or some... some um, some, 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 uh, some valuable, uh, remarkable, uh, good man. And um, the seer of Lublin uh, says, you know, um, I know him as well as I know you guys. And you're right, I know exactly who he is. Uh, you know how much I love gaiety and I hate dejection and I hate despondency. This man is sins to an astonishing extent. He's a remarkable sinner. And others repent for a moment, and then two seconds later, they're back uh, to sinning again. This guy, he knows no regrets, no doldrums, he never feels low. He lives in his happiness as if he's in some sort of tower. And it's the radiance of this happiness that overwhelms my heart. The seer of Lublin was, was basically saying, that he wished he could be as joyful and as happy in the performances of commandments and mitzvahs as this guy is happy in his, uh, in his uh, sinning. Uh, we're going to be doing more stories about the seer of Lublin and other great uh, Hasidic masters uh, of the past. Please come back. Please watch. Please learn. And until next time, on behalf of the Imuna Project, I'm Daniel, and thank you so much.